So sometimes you get to you can get two kinds of questions, right? In straight lines. The first thing is they so type one, question number one or type one is you are given the straight line equation and you have to draw the graph. The second type, type two, you're given the graph and you have to find the equation. Let's have a look at type one, where you're given the graph, given the equation, and you're asked to draw the graph. So let's suppose I have some random equation, y equals to 2x plus 3, and I want to draw this graph. First thing, sketch your Cartesian plane if it's not given to you. And when you're drawing this graph, you can think of several ways to do this, but you could use a table method. So method number one, table method. With the table method, you get an X values and you get corresponding Y values. So let's say X is zero. If I substitute zero in here, two times zero is zero, zero plus three is three. So it would be, it would shoot out like a machine, put zero in there and three comes out there. Put one in there, two times one is two plus three, and five comes out there. So that'll be five. And two, you could get a few points, three points, minimum two points needed. If you put two in there, two times two is four plus three is seven. And then each of these are coordinates. So this would be zero, three. This would be one and five this would be 2 and 7. And remember, when you're plotting coordinates, we always plot x first and then y. So for example, this would be x equals 0, y equals 3. So 1, 2, 3, which would be here. And for this one here, it would be 1 and 5. So 1 over here, 4, 5 over here. So it would be a, so it would be a, and then 2 and 7. So 2 is over here, 6, 7 is over here. So we could end up creating or having this straight line that we can draw connecting the dots. It has to be a straight line. All right, so if we didn't get a straight line, we probably did not plot it correctly. All right, there we go. I just drew the line. The easiest method is using this method, which is your table method. Then you get method number two. Method number two, you can go to the equation and say, well, y is equal to 2x plus 3. So that's where it's going to cut the y-axis. So let's say we initially had the graph empty. I'm going to just sketch it at the bottom here. What we would do is locate 3. In this case, it's positive 3. And then from there, we got this change in y over change in x. So change in y over change in x, which is rise over run. And it'll be 2 over 1. Which means, because it's just 2, it'll be 2 over 1. Which means that you go up 2 and you go right 1. Because they're both positive. When you're using method 2, we basically using our gradient intercept method. So we got our y intercept and our gradient. And this is known as the gradient intercept method. So we would jump two units up, five, and one unit right, the one. And we put another point there, the point one and five. So we jumped up two units just like that, and then we jump one unit right, just like that, starting at the y intercept. And we put a dot at where we land, which is 1, 5. Once we get that, all we have to do is connect those two dots, 
and we've got the exact same straight line just drawn slightly axis wise and that's method number two but it's still whichever method you choose or ask for i guess you got to use but you can use this method table method quite quickly as well if you found that easy method number three is if i got y equals 2x plus 3. This one is known as the dual intercept method. And the dual intercept method, what we do is we have an x-axis and a y-axis, and we just try and locate where the graph cuts the x-axis and where the graph cuts the y-axis. So we can have points on our y-axis, one of those points somewhere, could be anywhere, where the graph cuts and then some way along here where the graph cuts as well so how do we find those points the points on the y-axis or the point on the y-axis a single point in the y-axis is found when you make x equal to zero in your equation so you take your equation you replace x with zero and you end up with three which is quite simply your y-intercept which is three and then plot that but the point A or 0, 3. Then you look at your x-axis in the same way, but now you make the y value in the equation equal to 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 3. You can see y is now 0. And then you solve for x after that. So once you've done this here, you solve for x. By taking positive 3 over becomes negative 3, and by dividing by two on both sides, my x value will become negative three over two. So negative 1.5 or negative three over two. This is not a gradient. This is the x-axis or x-intercept. All right, so I'm gonna call it x-axis intercept. Intercept means cut, y-axis intercept. So this is going to be negative 3 over 2, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. This is negative 1.5 as a decimal, so I guess it's simply going to be over there, negative 1.5. And now that we have that, we just connect those two points together. This is method number 3, drawing exactly the same line that we had on the previous part. So this is the first one, method 1, table method and plotting it. Method number two, the gradient intercept method. Let me write that down. So gradient intercept method. They should actually call it the intercept gradient method because you first plot the gradient. And from the gradient, you then, I mean, you first plot the, the y-intercept. And from the y-intercept, you use the gradient to get the second point that you need to connect. And this is known as the gradient intercept method. Let me just write that the gradient intercept method. You don't, you probably won't get asked to use all the methods. You probably get asked to use one, or you might not get asked at all just to draw it, right? So, given the equation, drawing the graph, that's how we would do that. There's the equation and those three methods of drawing the graph.